Good afternoon all. On behalf of Badminton Pan America Confederation, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Mario Carrera and I'm pleased to be the moderator of today's session. Before introducing the topic of today and our speaker, let me quickly run through our family rules. I will address to our Spanish speaking community now. Pueden encontrar la opción de, traduc de traducción simultánea en la parte baja de sus pantallas, que está indicado como interpretación. If you have any questions or comments, we invite you to write them down using the chat function located on the right side of your screens. Questions will be answered at the end. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of the most emblematic coaches of badminton, Professor Martijn van Dormalen from the Netherlands, who will guide us through today's topic, skills and tactics in doubles. But first, let me speak a little bit about our special guest. Martijn has combined his position of former Netherlands national coach and technical director for over 28 years. Also, he has coached athletes under his stewardship to over 60 medals at World Championships, European Championships, Thomas and Uber Cup, and Olympic Games, winning a silver medal in the Olympic Games of Athens 2004 in women singles. Before we start, just a little advice from our presenter is that you try to copy the drawings that you will see on the presentation. The PDF will be shared after the presentation. And so without further ado, Martin, it's our honor to have you here again. Uh, the floor is yours. Please share your screen. Okay, we're ready. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mario, and uh, welcome uh, everybody to this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, good afternoon in Latin America and good evening in Europe, if you are living in Europe at the moment. Um, today, uh, um, I'm asked to talk about uh, skills and tactics in doubles, and um, it will be done in English. Uh, also, the slides will be in English. It, uh, it was too much to translate it, everything in, in Spanish as well, but I will try to talk uh, as slowly as possible so that the interpreter can, uh, can do her work and, and, and that you can understand things. Um, as Mario uh, said already, um, after this uh, webinar, um, the PDF uh, of this um, uh, presentation will send to you. So it's it's not necessary to uh, to copy all the drawings because it will send to you and then you've got it on paper or in your computer. And uh, I think that's far more easy than try to to uh, to draw as fast as possible. But uh, what I'm telling. Um, looking at um, uh, at badminton and, and probably also uh, in sport, uh, I think um, um, we have to look at um, at at the balance of between score and and prevent score, and um, and in fact what we are doing is is trying to take the initiative in in the game and make the balance go to our way to to score as fast as possible. Uh, or at least prevent scoring. This is what we don't want. This is what we want. So we want to take initiative to get to come to score and prevent our opponent to score. And especially when I look at the uh, double situations, um, I always look at, uh, and that's for me the most important thing, the service situation. Then I look at uh, defense and in the end, I look at attack. And also in this way, when I start to learn skills and tactics with players, I start with the service situation. Um, it seems to be very logical because when you start a rally, the first thing you do is to serve and uh, receive a service. So what you need to do is starting with a service situation. After that, you focus on defense, and after that, you focus on attack. And of course, more or less defense and attack 
are going more or less at the same time. Um, basic. Let's start with, with, with basic things and let's see what, uh, what we need to learn our players and, and, and what they need to do in, in the service uh, situation. So I've got uh, a drawing over here. You see uh, a badminton court, two players are serving uh, and one is receiving. So what do they need to learn, uh, in my opinion, uh, as basic for starting a double? They need to learn a backhand service to the tee. Uh, as we all know, we don't use anymore a, a forehand short service. We always go for a backhand service. And uh, for me, it's important that this is the first skill they need to learn. The second thing they need to learn is doing the inrush straight. So at the same time, at the same uh, side, not the same time, but at the same side as uh, your standing. So from the right side on this side to the left side of the opponent or the right side for the one who is uh, rushing in. Play it over here and play it over there. And of course, yeah, this is also, I think, the first exercise you need to do. Just serve and play the inrush over here. Second option is to play not only the service, but also the inrush and let a third player coming in and play fast back flat to the net or uh, straight. So I, you see this over here. So that's in fact uh, the, the second exercise, service, inrush, play to the net or play flat. And that's for me the basic uh, things players need to learn. Uh, to start a doubles, a doubles play. Um, what I'm saying was, okay, backhand start. So start with a backhand service. Use your fingers. Don't use too much uh, your arm uh, or your wrist. Uh, go with your racket from up to down. And that's what I mean over here, what he is doing. In rush with your racket from above to down so don't uh, come up with your racket under the net tape but keep it above the net tape and again um, when you rush in first your arm and follow your body so in this case he will start to do the in rush with first his arm movement and then the body is following and i also uh, learn uh, at the same time already some technical things. First of all, I think it's important, uh, basic technically, play straight, uh, play in between over here, uh, and also over here, uh, if, you, if we imagine that there's a, a fourth player over there, then we start to play in between the two players, and then you can discover some variation uh, when this player is coming to the front, uh, you can go that way uh, uh, to play more in the back. Or when you see that this uh, uh, inrush player is really doing his best, then you can start to play the cross one as back as well. And the last thing what, uh, what we learn over here is that we are working as much as possible in a front and back situation. So both sides, both sides, this one and this one, are playing in a front and back situation. That's what we mainly want to do in doubles as well. So already from the beginning on, I will start to learn them play straight and try to come in a front back situation. we come to the second part uh, the second part is, is, is defense and I think this is uh, probably uh, the essential skill for um, uh, for doubles uh, because what you learn over here is play a good defense but not only a defense skill but also 
a net skill. And let me explain uh, more or less the first exercise. I've got uh, four players on one court, uh, one player close to the net, one player more in the back. Uh, this player is just pushing down the shuttle and this player is just playing back to the net. And with pushing down, uh, I don't, uh, I mean really down, but not only down to the floor, but also to the hip, to the shoulder, uh, but at least not over him, but uh, more down on the body, uh, on the hip, uh, on the knee, on the foot. So make variations in putting it down and learn this player to defend uh, as good as possible and again for me this is essential this is a, a really essential skill you have to use your fingers racket in front of you elbow elbow away from your body play to different positions near the body and start with this easy exercise also this player is learning over here net skills because he needs to step in and push from up to down with his racket, his racket up above the net tape, uh, down to the, the one who is doing the defense. And I do this exercise uh, not only with beginners, I do this with, 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 uh, with top level players as well, always in a warming up. And of course, you've got a lot of variations. You can play. Uh, uh, like this, this is a simple one, but you can play one against two. So these are uh, playing down and he uh, he needs to play back. Uh, you can start to not only down and to the sides, uh, but also play a short one so that this player has to move left, right, up, down, up, down, and always having his racket uh, in the right way in front of his body and the elbow away from the body as well yeah and of course uh, in fact this is not what we want to see in dolls because you're not playing back to the one who is um, uh, hitting the shuttle towards to you so in the end the exercise should be more or less like this so playing down play away to the net, play away from the feeder to the net. So both players have to move now and can play down, uh, have to move left and right. Uh, the feeder can uh, uh, make variations by putting it short or more in the back. So then it becomes more or less, uh, let's say, a double exercise where you do your defense skill the block straight and cross, uh, what we need on, uh, on the return on the service, uh, in, uh, on the inrush in fact, uh, so it's the third stroke in, uh, in the game, in the doubles game. And in and, and this way, I try to um, move players around and improve their defense skills, but also their net skills. Because when this player is moving left, right, or more to the back and coming into the net. He always has to have his racket above the net tape and play the shuttle uh, with his racket from up to down. Then we go to, uh, to the attack. And um, of course, uh, when we in, in basic situations, when we talk about uh, attack, then we talk about a smash and a drop shot. But I also see sometimes, uh, and I think that's a very good solution, especially in women's doubles. I see also uh, playing a clear in the attacking situation. Um, when I do this with players, of course, uh, these skills, eh, smash and drop shots, are already learned. But now we want to make it more uh, accurate for the players. So if you play uh, a smash, then it really should be on the sideline. If you play a drop shot, it should be really more or less in the middle of your opponents. 
we also need to learn that you have to make variations. So it's smash, drop shot. Not only smash, 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 drop shot. That's better. Um, also, inside, outside. So not only changing uh, from left to right, but also from back to front. So that this player needs to move in defense. And in this way, of course, you can keep pressure on your player. And, and in this situation, we, um, uh, we also learn players um, uh, when to attack and how to attack. If I always say to my players, if you uh, if you are on the first uh, no, on the first service line on the double service line in the back, then you can really go for a fast and hard attack or go to a fast drop shot. If you are over here, you have to build it up. So it's not uh, a, a hard smash as hard as possible, but it's more uh, an accurate smash. Uh, more on the on the on the back line or more on the on the on the hip of the player over here you see eh, again the same situation uh where's my pointer wait a moment yeah it's over here um again smash outside inside outside inside you also see that i'm not playing the smash over here because that's not what i want in in doubles uh, and we will see that later. If we look at uh, women's doubles, uh, we have more or less the same situation. Huh? You can play the drop shot uh, or the smash, or smash and drop shot over here. But it's in women's doubles, it's also a very good option to play fast clear, not really in the middle, but if these are right-handed players, over the left shoulder of this player. It's quite successful in women's doubles because there's always a little bit of confusion between these players over here. Um, why am I not doing that in men's doubles? That's because of the fact in men's doubles players can move faster back or jump in to this area and come down with the smash over there. So for women's doubles, a clear is also an option for me. Um, if we uh, if we have done that, that's that's the basic uh, the basic level of, of 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 tactics and the basic level of, of skills. Then I go to the intermediate level, and um, now I'm adding also uh, a flick service, not only the the short service to the T but I'm also introducing a flick service. So the server has two possibilities, short to the T or in the back. Um, and I give also the receiver, I give him options. I give options to not only to, to go to this side and play this short or this shot, but also play a short one over here or also try to play this one half court, not this one. So these are the main three options I'm giving on the second level, the intermediate level. And again, the third stroke should be flat, straight, or cross. Now I give options to this player to play over here or from that side over there. Uh, from this side straight or over there yeah um you see that in this area and it was nice that um, uh, uh, jose antonio puto uh, i think three three uh, three days ago he was talking about uh, decision making and that's what players need to learn in in this situation uh, when the inrush is coming here uh, and I've got the option what to do, I can play over there, I can play over there, or even playing over there, but that's not my favorite. Uh, but this player needs to make in a split second uh, uh, a decision. 
and it depends on what the, the opponent is doing uh, and again i lost my pointer yes here it is so if the inrush player is really coming to this side uh, to 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 cover this side of the court the option is to play the sh the, the the cross court net play uh, the cross court net and that's decision making what uh, Tony Kuto uh, mentioned um, uh, three days ago. Um, now it's also time on intermediate level to go for uh, uh, high defense to the back, straight and cross. And we just start with a very, very uh, easy exercise. Just uh, smash high back, smash high back. Racket position uh, as normal use of the fingers uh, start with uh, uh, with your elbow first and then flick with with fingers and your wrist uh, and do this from different positions from your body so i'm asking this player when he is attacking not only to play the smash really down but also on uh, on the shoulder so that the smash is probably coming here or play on the hip so that's, there's a lot of variation in the attack. And, <coughs> and this player needs to learn to defend high, straight, and cross from different positions from his body. And of course, um, uh, you can do that just uh, standing over here. And if I play cross, I have to move a little bit, huh? Let, uh, what, what I see over here. You can do it with, with one against one and one against two. And if you do it with one against two, then when I defend over there, I move to this side and my partner is moving to that side. And then <coughs> in this way, I learn the players uh, how to move side by side. Huh? So we come from this situation, we come to that situation. And again, I think it's very important that players learn as fast as possible to play away from the feeder. So if we do just this, up, down, up, down, that's nice to learn the skill, but this one is better. I want you to play away from the feeder. So this one up, over there, move to the side, and we come to the same situation. On the other side of uh, of the court. Um, yeah, intermediate level. So what we did was now we uh, um, uh, we enlarged the the serve situation. We gave to our players uh, and we learned to our players also the possibility not only for block defense but also high. Um, but now we also come to the situation where uh, this player is maybe not uh, a little bit in front, but really in the back. So he needs to learn to play a stick smash or to play a drop shot in the center. And then I always need a fourth player. I never do that with just two players over here and one player over there because I want him to look at the net player as well. If the net player is over here, and I draw this a little bit more to the front, it should be a little bit over here, then play the drop shot in front of this player. So play a smash, stick smash, outside, inside, and this one. If the back player, the attacking player is seeing that the net player is going away, then there is a possibility to play the cross one and he needs to come in. So again, if this player is at the net, play straight down, this one and this one. If the back player is seeing that the net player is moving away from the net, then it's a sign to play the cross smash or the cross cross drop shot. And in that way, 
uh, I need to, and I'm learning those players that they can change positions. So if the net player goes away, cross, back to the, uh, more to the back of the court, and he's coming in. So if they can keep the, 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 the pressure on the player, then he will start to uh, attack and he will come to the net over there. And again, this is decision making because when uh, can this player uh, running away from the net? When, when, this, when can the net player step backwards? Uh, he can only do that when the shuttle over here is not really in the back. It should be more or less uh, in front of the, uh, the back service line for doubles. Then there is enough time for this player to come to the net. Then he can change. But the net player is making the decision when to change and how to change. Um, if, we, um, uh, if we go to the next stage, and then we talk already about uh, uh, high performance players. And then I give uh, the possibilities to uh, to my to the players to to serve to uh, to the four corners, not only to the four corners but also on the body. And um, in the return, uh, I'll give possibilities uh, to play these shots at the net. So also on the body of the uh, uh, serves player, in between, in between in between and the short ones. So, um, not anymore to the back, because if, uh, if the inrush is most of the time to the back, uh, it will be very, very easy for uh, the, uh, the, the second player to, to intercept and to take over. And again, um, it's about decision play uh, making. Uh, uh, when do I serve over there? Uh, when do I serve over there? Uh, so I need to make a decision uh, on what my opponent is doing uh, and what my experience with uh, with uh, with this opponent is in in the in the in the rallies before to decide what kind of service I should play. And again, also in the inrush, also in the inrush, it's important that you know a little bit, this player should know a little bit about his opponent. But because if this player is just standing there, then it's easy to play short over here. When he comes in, it should be a little bit harder to go in between. Or when he really comes to the net, there's a possibility to play that one. If uh, he's not really coming to the net, then there's also a possibility to play over there. The more he's coming to the net, the more I will choose to go for one of those three shots. <coughs> um, in defense, now I'm uh, really uh, uh, try to. Uh, 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 to go for uh, straight and cross defense, depending on what uh, uh, on what the English players are doing. So this one is serving. They receive the service. Uh, English over here to the side, decision making, and then I want to learn them not to play hard, but play the soft one over here and the soft one over there. So, and the soft one means that I'm not taking it as low as possible and play it uh, from down to up to the net. No, I have to take it uh, as high as possible and try to play it uh, in a straight line, uh, soft to this spot or soft to that spot. Of course, and that's with all the exercises uh, um, also uh, uh, on the slides before this one. 
Um, uh, you don't do this only from the right side, you do it of course also from the left side. And then it's a complete different situation. So always practice with serving from the right side and serving from the left side. Um, and again, um, to, to practice this, this, this soft play, um, uh, I make most of the time these type of exercises. Two feeders at the net, they just play down, and he is playing back. So when this one comes down, play away to the other side. When he is coming in, try to pass to this side. Uh, play to this side, <coughs> move to this side, <coughs> and again, try to play away from, uh, from the feeder. So for me, this exercise is quite important for uh, uh, high performance players uh, to learn to play uh, soft in the gap between uh, the two players uh, uh, on the other side of the net. <coughs> when we go to attack, I'm not changing so much, but uh, then uh, it's really individual. And what I want to do with them is, is making a uh, deception uh, with, uh, with body uh, from the back and with racket at the net. So from the back, uh, and we all know all, all those uh, variations, you go, go with a jump smash, uh, jump drop shot, uh, slice smash, slice drop shot, uh, pull to drop shot at the net uh, body um, body deception is not really effective it should be done with uh, with your fingers so change uh, the, the, the the direction of your racket head by turning your racket as, as, as fast as possible <coughs> and again it's about uh, decision making and uh, on um, uh, on, on, in a split second, and you have to know, of course, uh, your opponents. Okay, Mario, can we have uh, a small break? Yes, Martin. Yes, we're ready. Uh, so we can go through our trivia. And uh, today we have the trivia is which. Caribbean City hosted the Panam Mixed Team Championship in 2005. You already have some ideas there <coughs> to write your answer. The answer is Barbados in Bridgetown was the championship in 2005. <coughs> so we have to review a little more of our tournaments. Um, Okay, Martin, um, are you ready? Yes, yes, You can yes. continue? Excellent. Yep. Okay, okay, you're in charge again. So, um, when we come to uh, the, the next slide, and here you see, uh, in fact, an overview of uh, the skills related to uh, the tactics I want to play and I want to learn to my players. So I go from basic to yeah, through intermediate to high performance. And in this way, I try to learn them um, the service situation. In this way, I try to learn them uh, defense. And as I uh, told you, I think this one is for me the most essential skill and the most essential exercise uh, we have uh, to work on defense and to work on net play as well. But in this way, I try to combine skills, um, skills and tactics in doubles and learn them. Uh, to go from basic to high performance um, uh, in doubles. Then 
we have something different, and that's the 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 mixed doubles. And there's um, a big difference uh, between um, um, mixed doubles um, and, and and normal doubles in the, in the service situation. First of all, um, in the service situation, uh, men have to serve a long distance, eh? so they are most of the time not standing really in front of the the service line, but a little bit back. So the opponent has uh, a little bit more time um, to, uh, to to do the inrush. That's I think also the um, um, uh, the reason why um, in, in mixed doubles uh, men are using more the flick service uh, than than in doubles. And women needs to learn, especially net interception. So. Uh, this skill over here, what they are learning in, 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 in basic uh, defense, uh, defense skill and net skill, that's what they need over here as well. And secondly, um, um, and that's not what we saw in doubles, I think in defense, uh, men should not play away from uh, uh, not always play away from uh, uh, the, the one who is smashing but try to keep the shuttle in front of you uh, so that the, uh, the attack is coming to the men as much as possible and just play it away when you really know that um, uh, uh, that your opponent will be uh, in trouble and not can put pressure on uh, on the girl who are, where you are playing with, and in defense, I think women needs to learn a lot of uh, blocking and fast, not so much high block and fast and go to the net. Uh, high is um, let's say the second choice in defense. In in the attack. Even more than the men's doubles, men need to learn a lot of variation in attack, not only attacking on, uh, on, on the girls, but also on the men. And the girls need to learn to play down, down, down as much as possible. And then again, it's over here. This is important, your net skill. If the women are playing at the net, they should be playing down. Not always fast, it can also be very, very soft. So, <coughs> again, the service situation, and we are talking uh, right-handed players, uh, I'm a little bit uh, more back, uh, so my option is also uh, to play the flick service in the back. Um, so, uh, my opponent probably will not be really uh, over here, but a little bit more in the back because not only he has to be ready for the flick service as well, but also uh, uh, when the rally continues after the service situation, his main area of working will be over here. So if he comes over there, it will be very difficult. Uh, if he comes over here in the, in the service situation, it will be very difficult for him to go back again. <coughs> service returning girls in front they are responsible for this area she is responsible for this area for her it's almost impossible to reach this one and to play it down for her it's almost impossible to reach this shuttle and play it down so the inrush player and service player, they are responsible for this area as well. And he is responsible for that area as well. So they must be really ready to go over here, over there, or over there. Defense, keeping the shuttle in front of you. So if the attack is coming, the the girls uh, the girl is uh, is is um, 
uh, covering the net. So I play up, maybe in between. But if he's under pressure in defense, so I'm really having it in, in the back or over there, then my next shot could be on that side. So it's first this side, this side, and then go to the back. Attack, variation, drop shot, uh, in the middle on the, on the girls, a drop shot to the sideline. A lot of variation. And again, uh, after this shot, she should go to the net and play down, down, down as much as possible. So that's uh, the difference <coughs> between, let's say, uh, the normal doubles, eh? men's doubles and mixed doubles. Uh, men's doubles and women's doubles and mixed doubles. I think mixed doubles is a little bit different uh, uh, with skills than the women's doubles and the uh, and the men's doubles. So <coughs> we have everything on one slide. Um, again, uh, these are uh, are, are the, the the skills uh, on on basic level, intermediate level and high performance level um, and of course when you start to play mix then there's a little bit more um, attention uh, to these kind uh, of skills um, and with these skills these are for me the main skills where i learn uh, players uh, to play doubles in a tactical way and I'm always trying to uh, learn them the skill together uh, with the tactical background. Next step, of course, is uh, when, when you have done this part, uh, you have to talk about uh, the responsibility areas in the service situation. Eh? And we saw that already a little bit uh, over here in mixed doubles. This girl is responsible for this area. She is responsible for this area. Uh, so he is responsible for this one. He's responsible for that one. <coughs> but it's uh, not always, um, it's not only in the service situation, it's also in defense situation, in attack situation. And of course, there is, um, um, uh, there are some sometimes slight but sometimes also big difference when you're playing with left and right handed doubles so one player is right handed one player is left handed it gives you uh, some other possibilities uh, to learn to play doubles or uh, to learn who's responsible for what area but um, um, i don't think we should uh, talk about this now uh, this topic was about, uh, let's say, skills and, and tactics, and that's what we, uh, what we saw now. Uh, Mario, it's, uh, it's up to you now. Uh, uh, not totally. You're still in charge. Now we will move to the question and answer. Okay. Okay. So uh, we already have some uh, questions uh, <coughs> from Jose Antonio. Um, he's asking, which is your advice or uh, to determine the responsibility in the case that we attack uh, in the center to the middle between two players okay so that who's the one who should answer or who should defend yeah 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 um yeah it um it's um uh, let's say the 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 most easy defense is uh, is the the back end defense so um, what you're doing is, um, um, let's try, uh, wait, I will, I will show it and share a screen that could be the most easy way to, to show it to people. And let's see, where do we have it? Yeah, for instance, in, 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 in this case, um, um, the question is, when this player attacks in the middle of these players, 
Yes. Who will take who? Who yes. will take what shuttle? So the most easy defense and the most, uh, let's say, uh, uh, winning defense from this side is when this player, no, sorry, when this player, right-handed player, could play with a backhand defense to this side. So I prefer as much as possible that this player is playing most of the shuttles in the middle. When I do it from the other side, it's exactly the same. Always preferable the one who is doing the backhand defense. Okay, perfect. Um, we have another question from Dylan. He's asking, in mixed double, who is responsible for the straight in between service return if the man is doing the service? Who is responsible for the straight? Yeah, for a straight return. Straight yeah, to the side or in the middle? Uh, he's not specifying. Dylan, can you specify? I think it's... Uh, I think it's playing uh, to the side. To the side, okay. Yeah. When the okay. man is serving. Mm -hmm. That's uh, this situation, man is serving, and this is, he's mentioning this one, yeah? Yeah. This girl should uh, intercept. So uh, what I told over here was already net interception. So if this is coming in, um, uh, yes, of course, she's responsible for this one. But if she's covering this side of the court and the shuttle is coming over here, she must try to, uh, to intercept the shuttle over here as well. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for him to go over there. Yeah? Okay. So it's more or less <coughs> the task of, uh, of the girl to cover this side of the court over here. And maybe my, uh, my drawing is not, not correct uh, completely. Uh, so it should be more or less like this. Yeah? Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, we have a question from Jose Maria. Um, let me translate it. Uh, what is your opinion about early specialization of athletes, especially in the mix and uh, doubles events? What is your recommendation? Um, uh, Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of uh, um, uh, develop players um, um, as, as, as much as possible um, and not starting up uh, specialization in doubles uh, on a very, very early age. So most of the time um, uh, I decided to do this with players um, around, uh, let's say, 16, 17 years old. Then I decided... Um, Uh, to um, to go uh, or to give more preference to singles or more preference to doubles. Um, but I think those players uh, also when they have more preference uh, for uh, for doubles, keep them also in singles a little bit longer so that they really, really also need to learn uh, uh, the long distance um, uh, in, in, on court because sometimes they need that in doubles as well. And uh, when they are um, under 19, uh, from, let's say, uh, under 17 to under 19, go for even more doubles. And then in the end, uh, when they are seniors, they go for doubles. Okay. I'm trying to join two questions. Um, it's relating, um, should women uh, control, let's say, at perfection, uh, the net as well as the rear court? 
Yeah, well, what uh, what we see uh, uh, more and more, of course, is that um, uh, in 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 mixed doubles, um, it's it's going more and more to let's say doubles than than the uh, uh, the classical mixed doubles where the girl is covering the net. But uh, I still think that the main task of the girls is to cover the net and. <clears throat> I'm also um, uh, convinced that, in fact, uh, a good mixed doubles is uh, is done by uh, the girls who are really good at the net and can play the shuttle in a way that uh, uh, the opponent needs to hit it up so that the attack can come from the back. So the role of the girls is probably more important at the net than in the back. But um, uh, uh, what we saw, um, what we saw over here at the net, she needs to play down, always down. And that's why I think it's so important that um, uh, uh, her racket should be at least above the net tape so that uh, she can reach the shuttle above the net tape and not only play it fast down, but play it really, really just, just behind. Uh, if this player is, is, is over here, just play it a little bit behind uh, the, the net player of the opponent. Okay. Um, we have a question from Axel. In attacking position, what is the interest to change positions? It's a switch. Um, is it when the The smasher is tired in case of rallies or is uh, the one in the net who decides when to switch? Uh, the one at the net is deciding. Uh, when you are a net player um, then uh, and, and the shuttle is coming over you, um, you must be aware of how far and how high that shuttle will be. So you must be aware where your opponent can do the attack. So when the shuttle is coming over you, and you know this one is in front of the, of the, the back service line in doubles, then I can step away. So as a net player, I decide to step away, and then my partner knows, okay, now it's the time to can, come in. Now I can play a full smash and go for it. And of course, yes, uh, uh, when, you, when you have a, a, a good doubles and, and then probably as, part of, as partners, you know, uh, okay, the guy in the back, he's tired, he's tired. He, he can't smash 21, 22 anymore. So we need to change and we need to do something. But uh, uh, it's, it's not on that. It's on uh, the net player has to decide Uh, uh, when and how to change. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's very clear. Um, another question from Gian Piero. Uh, what do you think about the part partner's arrangement? Is it to the coaches to choose? Uh, do players choose? Is it a dialogue between coaches and players? And uh, what role does the psychology play on the partner arrangement? I, uh, I think it's always uh, um, uh, the interaction between players and the coach. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the two players, they need to, um, um, to see enough possibilities with each other. So they, uh, they must be aware of uh, strength and weakness of, uh, of the partner and, and know that they can uh, compensate each other. Um, uh, as a coach you, you can steer that of course a little bit and uh, to look at uh, complementary uh, skills um, yeah and what part of uh, psychology is, is playing in this um, e yes um, I'm not saying that uh, uh, doubles players sh should like each other Um, uh, especially when you come on uh, on high level, it's um, 
it's it's not based on uh, I like you, so we play together, but it's more based on uh, on results and uh, how we how we can achieve uh, the best results. So it's it's more business than than social. Um, yes, and uh, the one of the uh, psychological parts is of course the fact that sometimes in doubles uh, you are depending on your partner as well and he or she can have a bad day and um, then you have to cope with that and that's psychological okay um again jose antonio is asking an advice uh, i guess everybody has this doubt um what are the well again what are the advices you gave when you have when the let's say the couple is a right-handed and a left-handed like uh, advices to train to take into consideration for their training and also when you play against them i don't know if i make myself clear um <clears throat> yeah uh, if uh, um Yeah, if, if, if you look at left-handed and right-handed players, um, and it, it has a positive effect, and, but it can also be negative. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, let's say, uh, both rackets are uh, in the center, uh, if you are left and right, and sometimes uh, both rackets are uh, outside and the center is not covered. So... Um, They really need uh, to learn in, in specific situations, especially in defense situations, they need to learn who's taking, uh, who's taking the, the shuttles in the middle. <laughs> they, also <coughs> they also need to learn in service situation on what side they need to do the inrush so that the, the third stroke is um, uh, let's say on the favorite side of my partner and um, so that's our two diff uh, uh, important situations and when you want when you are playing against the uh, left and right handed then um, it's a little bit more complicated when you want to do it in a tactical way eh? if you want to play um, uh, inside outside or play the, um, uh, the, the, the drop shot in the middle or to the side, then you have to see already um, uh, if the uh, 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 opponent where you are attacking on is a left-handed or a right-handed player. And so decision-making is even more important uh, when you uh, play left, left right-handed uh, uh, doubles. Because it's different uh, to do inside, outside on a left-handed player straight than on a right-handed player straight. Okay. Uh, ooh, time uh, has caught us up. Uh, we'll do some um, final question. Um, this regarding the how you schedule the training sessions for doubles and mix uh, between a week for the, let's say the basic and the medium level. And uh, how many days you use for singles? How many days you use for doubles? Uh, that's quite a complicated question because uh, it has to do also with, uh, did I make already decisions on, um, 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 uh, is this player going for doubles or going for singles? Um, um, if if I start <coughs> if I start with players doubles <coughs> sorry doubles and uh, mixed doubles and singles are spread over 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 the week uh, equally maybe mixed doubles not so much as as doubles but uh, let's say doubles and singles 50-50. Uh, but when I come under 17 and and I prefer this player to go for doubles, then it will be, let's say, uh, 60% doubles and 40% uh, uh, singles. And one year later, it will be uh, 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 70% doubles and 30% um, uh, uh, singles, and so on. 
uh, but it also has to do, of course, with um, how fast is uh, somebody learning skills in doubles or in singles? Okay, it's perfect. Um, we have a lot of questions. We have to try to go through most of them. Uh, please don't forget, you can also use the YouTube channel to post your question and we'll try to answer them. Again, Martin, thank you very much. Um, any final words for us? No, it's uh, it was uh, it was again nice to, uh, to 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 do this webinar. Um, uh, I follow all the uh, webinars uh, over the over the past uh, past weeks, um, 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 uh, and and, and uh, as you can see, um, and if you remember those webinars, uh, 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 Tony Kuto was talking about decision making. Um, uh, Jose Salis from uh, Guatemala was uh, was talking on skills and how to build it up in singles and in doubles, and you see some of those things coming back with me as well. If you look at the under seventeen profile of uh, Martin Andrew, um, and and uh, if if people who are listening to these webinars can combine these type of things uh, from different coaches, I think they they really uh, can develop a, quite a big range of um, uh, uh, way to approach uh, players and learn skills and tactics to players in, in doubles and in singles. So uh, for me, it's very, uh, very valuable. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Martin. Um, for our audience, please help us improve the quality of our course contents and delivery by completing this uh, survey anonymously. Um, also, as I said, um, we encourage you to follow the, our YouTube channel where you can find all the seminars and post your questions and we'll try to answer them also. And also don't forget, if you like to propose any special topic, any idea, please post it on the chat box. Uh, we'll take them uh, noted. Okay, so our service survey time is on is off we finish and uh, to our badminton family we invite you to the next session entitled planning an olympic cycle uh, rio 2016 experience on tuesday june 23rd at 15 hours lima time where we will be happy to have the presence of the coach roberto mojinedo from cuba on behalf of badminton pan america confederation we thank you for your participation. Stay safe and goodbye, and we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>